Hi everyone, my name is Scott Foss and I'm the concert and classical choral editor for Hal Leonard Publishing. I'm absolutely delighted to be here tonight with conductor, composer, idea person, creator, and longtime friend, Judith Clerman. We're here tonight to speak to you about a new major work titled Washington Women. It is a um, 12 movement major work uh, that Judith has written along with her collaborator, David Chase. So um, Washington Women made its world premiere on the NPR Tiny Desk Concerts, where they did a portion of it. And it's been quite a phenomenon. So many people have signed on, logged on, and watched the concert. And the response has been absolutely spectacular. So I got thinking and wondering, where do you start when there have been so many women over the years who have said important things to choose 16 to represent this work? Judy, how do you start that? Where do you go? Well, first, thank you, Hal Leonard and Scott, for affording me this opportunity. Um, let me tell you how I chose the texts. I originally thought about a piece honoring the first ladies and then the first women Supreme Court justices, but my ideas and dreams changed. Um, it's a fun personal story. One day my sister Anne and I were talking and she suggested that I honor many women. She was right and she's always right. And we, that day we generated a list of about 20 remarkable women that changed our lives. And the list grew and grew. So I went home and it, it took a long time to look up texts and decide why I wanted to use them. Um, I asked myself if many specific texts would work musically and they, why they wouldn't work musically. But more importantly, which ones would resonate with high schoolers and general the general public, I wanted this piece to have a life and be performed for high school community choruses and the general public. I finally had to narrow down the list to 10 or 12 people. The list included first ladies, senators, congresswomen, Supreme Court justices, and secretaries of state. But the piece was delayed because of COVID and happily in 2021, we added our vice president and speaker of the House of Representatives. But then the big thing was permissions. And I want to talk about permissions. That's the hard part. The writing, the promotion, or a piece of cake compared to getting permission. I needed to get permission from these ladies or their representatives to proceed. How Leonard has lawyers, they needed to see things in writing and everything is not in the public domain. So I hired a lawyer to teach me about public domain, fair usage, and various copyright issues. And I began my journey. Uh, sometimes I, I must say, sometimes I lost patience. I screamed at emails I received from people, but I just kept my eye on the ball and I said, I have to do this. I knew that one and all the permissions had to be in a letter or an email so we could even begin writing and how Leonard would need this for publication. And oral permission is not sufficient for copyrighted material. And I learned that quotes from our government employees while they served in office, such as a Supreme Court justice or a Congresswoman speaking on the floor of the House of Representatives, were all considered public domain texts. A TV or radio interview, not public domain. And many of the quotes that I found online were not even said by the people. You can't believe everything on google.com people. Um, so I wrote numerous letters of permission. And out of courtesy, I wrote to the people whose words were public domain. And believe it or not, some asked not to be included in a musical piece. But even if some did not respond, I knew from the lawyer that many of these texts were public domain. So they are included. 
in my correspondence with these women or their representatives, I explained that Washington women would be written for high school choruses and community choruses. It would be accessible and loving, and it would be recorded and published by Hal Leonard. You have to spell it all out in permission. Um, and if I spoke with somebody, I elaborated on this and I said, I was passionate about this piece, working for the young and the old and have texts that people would enjoy studying and have students enjoy studying the background and the history behind these quotes. I wanted high school children in the United States to know who these remarkable women were, are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I could not make final choices until I received the permissions. It took about two years. And man, I'm not a patient person and did I learn patience. Um, our final list was Abigail Adams, Madeline Albright, Barbara Bush, Laura Bush, Charlie Chisholm, Hillary Rodham Clinton, Betty Ford, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Kamala Harris, Elena Kagan, Michelle Obama, Sandra Day O'Connor, Nancy Pelosi, Condoleezza Rice, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Margaret Chase Smith. So um, can you give me an overview of the music, 12 movements? Sure. What, what are the pieces that we need to know about? Okay. First, I want to say something about writing this. You know, David Chase was the main composer of this, but I was involved in every word, every note, edited, rewrote things, and really was super involved, composed a little. And the, I love David's description that each movement, um, I say, each movement's like a musical puzzle because of the text. Some of the texts lent themselves more to music, a musical setting than others. But he said the issue was we had to musicalize all these texts. The musical styles in each movement are very varied. Now, remember, I was a singer. I conduct choruses. I don't want anybody bored with this. And every woman was a different personality. So every piece had to be a different personality. And we hope that each movement represents the meaning of the words. Um, the tempi change changes throughout the 12 movements, slow works, fast works, some homophonic, some imitative passages, a lot of counterpoint, and slow and fast musical declamations of words. And the most important thing is that each movement tells a story. Each one of these women, whether they were saying five words or five sentences were telling a story and something important when they were speaking or being interviewed. I would suggest anybody doing this study the text first and the entire libretto is printed in the score. Um, the music, each movement uses, each movement but one uses cello and piano and one movement just uses the cello. Judy, you know, as I listen to you talk about both the music and the words, I want to I want to bring up the fact that you and your collaborator Dave Chase were absolutely insistent that all of the words, which we'll call the, the libretto at this point, right. were shown before the music together as in a running order, which I think is tells the story and informs the conductors that in fact all the students, all the singers, all the conductors should get inside these lyrics. It's like a civics class involving the social studies department and the language department and the poetic department, English, history, all of those things before they sing a note. Would you agree with that? I I'm a believer more than ever. You hear this from me all the time when we're talking about music. Words matter. And this is 2022. Words matter more than anything. But when you just study the text, you see where they put a comma, where they put a semicolon, how they used an adjective, how they used the parts of speech. And it's, it's fascinating. Nice to have speech writers. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, you never know. I know. You know um, but I, I, um, you bring up the order of these pieces, but I want to say one does not have to perform Washington women in that order. You could do whatever you want, just like you could vary the size of the group. You could vary the size of the group performing within a movement. You will see yourself that some movements work better for singers, eight singers, some work for 250 singers, or your whole chorus could sing the entire piece. But you could really change the orders of the pieces. And you could do a three minute piece, you could do six minutes, you could do all 31 minutes. But you need to also think about the space in which you're performing, you all know that, and use your imagination and just make it work. So Judy, there is a recording uh, put out by ASIS. And if anybody visits judithclerman.com, they can find uh, how to order that and all of its streaming services. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. So sp speaking about the recording, you've made it very clear that the work, you, you were absolutely committed to making it available to high schools and community choirs. But your professional choir made the recording. What was their reaction? That's a really great question. First, before the recording, what I love to do in music now, if it's a new piece, is I learned this from the theater community, I workshop a piece. And everybody got excited. And I want to say that. Um, and they all reacted, and I had like eight out of the 17 that did the original recording. And by the way, I used um, some chorus interns in this. It's not all professionals in the original. I thought it, I always thought it was important to use a couple of young undergraduate students. And after we workshopped it and we made changes, um, we rehearsed for the recording and we spent a lot of days rehearsing. They fell in love with it. There were times they went, oh my God, oh my God, these words are so great, they're terrific. Some of them cried. Um, I couldn't cry, I had to get the job done. We had a certain amount of time. Um, but every word mattered. And I think that's the important thing. Every word mattered. And I would stand up there in rehearsals for the recording and make changes if the word was not coming over enough or we had problems with the word. Um, we really cared about details. I used the professionals because I first envisioned this piece as a chamber work. You know, it's for uh, a chorus, a piano, and a cello and not orchestra yet, I'll get to that in a minute, and soprano, alto, tenor, bass, because we're in a world where people say the word inclusive. And even from day one, I felt men need to learn about these women, women need to learn about these women. I want this piece, the soprano, alto, tenor, bass, to begin with. And I think that's a very important part of this, um, everybody was just excited. And when we sang the Tiny Desk concert, which had been delayed for two years because of COVID, it was probably one of the most exciting days in everybody's lives. We, everybody at NPR loved this. We all loved this. We had such great meaning to do this in Washington. And I look forward to bringing this back with the professional singers doing it with some of my volunteers, but we're going to be doing it with a high school in the Bronx during International Women's Month. And I want to do this with a hundred kids. And the school wants me to do, we'll be doing it at uh, Lehman College. Um, and I think this is the really important part of doing this piece. You want the community to do it. So the work is published by Hal Leonard. Uh, there is a score. Uh, 
full, full score, cello part is separate. It's available from any and all dealers across the country and throughout Europe and, and Asia. The recording is available streaming and you can find those uh, connections on Judith's website, judithclerman.com. And we would love to hear from all of you, teachers, students, on what you learn about these important women, how it affects you, uh, what changes it might make in your life. Uh, Jude, I asked Judith if we could share her email address and she said, bring it on. I want to, I want to hear from people. I, I want to know that people are singing it and that it makes a difference. Judy, what's your, what's your address? Email. Something about that too. J C L U R M A N at gmail.com. But you know what? Maybe we're going to write a couple of more Washington women movements that'll be available separately in the next couple of years as different people establish themselves in Washington, D.C. It'd be kind of exciting. Hey, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with us. And Judy, thank you for six years of bringing this to life. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.